Every Joker in Zero Suit main has thousands of hours of competitive ultimate footage to study to aid in their rise to the top. But what about the low tier mains? Where should the Docs and Samuses of the Smash world be looking to for guidance? And where should the player who just lost 5 straight sets to Villager in Elite Smash go to after they recover from their salt induced coma? Well, Pro Guides is here to help by scouring the web for the best videos to learn more about some of Ultimate's low tiers. And if you're looking for some supplementary helping after this video is over, check out our on-demand coaching on ProGuides.com. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new Pro Course with MKLeo himself, a new one with Esam, as well as others coming soon. But with that out of the way, let's talk about Kirby. The set that I want to highlight for the newly buffed Pink Puff Ball is the French Kirby main Je suis Shock versus none other than MKLeo. Game 1 of this set highlights both the strengths and the weaknesses of the character. During the first First half of game 1, Jisui shows off the new combo strings that Kirby is capable of and generally keeps Joker on his back foot. But like any player of his caliber, MKLeo starts adapting. What he specifically does to turn around his stock deficit and eventually win the game is slowing down the pace of the game. Kirby doesn't have a projectile unless stolen from another character with his neutral B, so he's helpless against Joker's gun in side B. Watching this, Kirby mains need to be playing a close to mid-range style of game against characters with good projectiles or the chip damage they'll occur from giving up that breathing room will cost them. Next up is Jigglypuff. For any Puff main, the first step should be for sure labbing and practicing your rest setups. Although knowing these links aren't as important as they are for Puff in other games like Melee, knowing what can consistently land you those rests and net you kills is critical for maining the other pink Puffball. For supplementary material, check out Cannon Red's Jigglypuff with MVD Snake. Although the set doesn't end well for Cannon Red, you can see some incredible use of Puff's aerial mobility throughout the set. Playing against Snake can often feel reminiscent of a bullet hell game and requires enemies to find unique ways to approach to get in without being hit by one of many projectiles. So try to take some notes on how Cannon is able to find their way in so that you can use this not only against Snake, but also to mix up your approach options in other matchups. One last note, Cannon is also able to eloquently sprinkle in the newly buffed rollout very effectively throughout the set, one of which even nets them a shield break. Next we jump to someone completely different from the last two, Little Mac. Tempo's Little Mac versus Ketchup's K Roll reminds us of the golden virtue for any Mac players and anyone playing against Little Mac. Patience. Little Mac is one of the best characters on the ground in Smash Ultimate, so if he's able to force engagements on the ground by doing things such as taking the lead in a game, Mac is going to have a great chance of winning like Tempo does in Game 2. But if Mac falls behind and his opponents can camp him on platforms or with projectiles, the chances of victory for Little Mac drops dramatically. So in short, you've gotta play lame, or at least much slower than normal if you want to win on either side. And the road to doing this is shown off for both players across these three games. And one last thing that we see in this match is the prevalence of good matchup knowledge. As Tempo pulls down Smash at the ledge to cover K. Rool's recovery, which is something you should be aware that it exists. For Bowser Jr., we jump to two players we've already seen in this video, with MKLeo this time playing Lucina and Ketchup now on Bowser Jr. Ketchup shows off a lot of Ludwig's main tools by using them consistently throughout the video. His use of side B into up B very deep off stage to recover makes it near impossible to punish his recovery when he hits the sweet spot. He should probably be mixing this up at least slightly as by the end of the set, since Leo started to catch on to the fact that Ketchup is doing this nearly every time and begins to punish him for it. Ketchup's liberal use of jab and neutral is easily the all-star of this set though. He's able to lock Leo into it, rack up a ton of damage, and ends up taking many of MKLeo's stocks with it throughout the set. The last highlight of this set is more of a special case scenario, with Ketchup's use of grounded side B on stage to tech chase Leo. He was too far away to use an aerial to punish the missed tech, so he instead uses side B to not only close the distance, but to cover pretty much every option. We continue on to Isabel by highlighting a match between Lucina main nemesis and Sea Hunter on Isabel. The most critical part of Isabel's kit and what defines the range you need to play around is her fair slingshot. If Isabel can keep opponents within the range, she can keep control of the pace of the game, which Sea Hunter does for almost the entirety of the set. Hunter tends to counter with an up tilt that looks like it leads into a bunch of options. When Nemesis starts giving Isabel too much space, Sea Hunter capitalizes on that by taking the time to plant a Lloyd, which gives them even more control over what space his opponent can safely inhabit. For Lucina, it looks like the golden zone in 
in this matchup exists in the area between mid-range and up close. The area where Isabelle's tilts cannot hit Lucina, but her sword can. Also, Sea Hunter appears to be using Isabelle's fishing rod akin to an option like Falcon Kick. It doesn't have the best frame data or priority and often can be punished, but if an enemy isn't ready for it, it can easily net you a kill. And the last low tier we're going to talk about today is Piranha Plant. The match we're going to be specifically talking about is Brood facing off against Yamanyan at Umabura. I think this set does a great job at highlighting why many people don't play Piranha Plant. First off, even watching arguably the best plant in the world, it's hard to tell what kind of character plant is supposed to be. The way Brood pilots plant is this weird projectile-based heavy that has to win neutral 10 times to take a stock because nothing combos. He'll mix up neutral occasionally by approaching with Nair, dash attack, grab, or jab, but the plant special seems to be as follows. Use neutral B and side B to set up a situation for opponent, then react to opponent's reaction or repeat steps 1 and 2. So if you like having to win neutral two times more than your opponent to be able to win a set, plant's your boy. Okay, I apologize if I'm coming off a little harsh on Brood and the rest of you plant mains out there, especially seeing as Brood walks away with a W from this set. It's honestly an exhausting set just to watch. But if you're the kind of person who enjoys playing low tiers and constantly fighting this uphill battle for a character you love, this is just par for the course and serves as a great example. And that wraps up our video highlighting some of the best sets you can learn more about low tiers from. Let us know if you enjoyed this video and would potentially like to see us do this with other characters in the future. Also, those of you who play the characters we talked about today, I'd love to hear some of your insights about some of the best and worst things your character has to offer down in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future.